Well, I would say the sun is shining, but it is kind of shining. We're here at Stone Dead. Uh, Stone Dead. Look at the star game, please. The sun is shining. Oh, fucking hell. Here we go. Let's do it again. Two, Outtakes. Three, four, this is brilliant. Yeah, here we go. The sun is shining in the sky, as the uh, song from uh, ELO, uh, Mr. Jeff Lynn, has once said. And we're here at Stone Dead 2021. We omitted 2020, of course, because it was a complete shower uh, and uh, nobody went anywhere. But we're here this weekend with the lovely Toby Jetson with Wayward Sons. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. How are you, dear? I am absolutely marvellous. Looking fine, I've got to say, Ad. I know, I know. It takes a lot of work to look this good. Um, <laughs> it takes a, a lot of dedication, mm -hmm. a lot of time, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, lots of haircuts, as you will know. We'll come on to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and uh, really special. But we're here, really. There's twofold, really. Stone Dead, you're back. This isn't your first radio here. No. And the crowd love you. And we, you know, it was a popular thing for you to come back. Great to hear. What are we going to be expecting to hear today? Because you are not just doing it, but you're headlining tonight. We are headlining tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a great opportunity to play quite a lot of new songs from the new record, which is uh, even up the score, which is we're coming out October the 8th. Get that plug in there. I'd thought I'd better make the old plug there. Absolutely, yes. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, do you know what? This is our third show back from, you know, um, coming out of this whole pandemic and all the rest of it. So. You know, we're getting our fan in our gig feet again, as, as I think every band in, <laughs> every band in the world is doing, that. you know. Um, but no, it's just fantastic to come and play this festival. I mean, I was absolutely blown away with, you know, um, the first time we played here a couple of years ago, and it was just an absolutely brilliant experience. And amongst my favourite festivals I've ever played in my entire career, I've got to say. So um, to come back and play and headline, I mean, I, said, I, mean, I com comically said to Chris after we played a couple of years ago, you know, oh, well, we'll come back and headline for you one day. And here we are. And here you are. And it's the party. So, you know, it should be great fun. And um, yeah, listen, it's, it's awesome just to play. You know, after all of this stuff that we've been through, we've all been through this, you know, the, the, the terrible difficulties of the last couple of years, you know, it's, um, it's just great to be out playing and seeing people enjoying themselves again and enjoying rock and roll. Well, you've been keeping us going for the last 18 months uh, from your kitchen with <laughs> yes. the annoying clock. Yeah. I have to say, mm -hmm. my OCD has been triggered considerably by that clock in your kitchen. I, I, I could see you getting quite riled about that at some various points. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, <laughs> it was brilliant, though. And the wonderful thing about it is, is you, you've had this. You, you're one of these innovators who keeps going, we need to keep in touch. We need to keep in contact mm. with your audience. Yeah. That's obviously a very important thing for you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I've, you know, I've been a fan first um, and, a, and a performer second, you know. I mean, I was, I was, I've said many times, I was that kid that queued up to buy the, what, the rain, new Rainbow album or the new, you know, Black Sabbath record in the rain outside my record store, as well as buying tickets to go and see festivals, whatever, you know, when I was a, a youngster. And, um, you know, I know what that feels like. I know how important that stuff is. And I know what the, what the connection between the audience and the, and the bands are, you know, should be. And I, and I think, you know, my training through Little Angels days is we were all like that. We all felt very privileged, privileged to be there, that anyone would want to turn up and see us play. You know, we always felt it was a privilege that anyone would part with their hard-earned money to do that. Um, and so I've always carried that forward. I feel the connection between the audience and the bands um, is it's the most important thing. You know, without bands, there are, without fans, there are no bands, etc. You know, so... Um, you know, when, when the lockdown kicked off, you know, at the beginning, uh, uh, you know, going back into 2020, it was, to me, it was just like a real necessity I, it, for my own mental health, for my own well-being, to be able to physically play music. Mm -hmm. um, and I found myself in my little band, my little room where I do all my composing and do all my, my sort of production work. And I just sort of saw my guitar sat in the corner and I thought, well, I've got that thing over there. And I've got the voice in my head and I've got the songs that I've written. So... I'm just going to put all those things together like I normally do, and I'm just going to play. And um, I mean, the, the, the most amazing thing is, is that you know we're in a world of incredible technical advances, aren't we? You know, to the very fact I can just mount my phone <laughs> on a tripod. It's amazing. Isn't it? Press Facebook. You know, I mean, God bless them. I mean, you know, I know there's a lot of problems with Facebook, but the fact I could perform down Facebook and gather that large audience that I did over that period of time and entertain people and me feel fulfilled by doing that was extraordinary. And I think. Um, we should be celebrating the fact that these, for all the problems we have with social media, actually that was a really massively positive thing, you know. And it, it was really, really important to me, yeah. Of course, with all the positives that we talk about, what you've done with social media, I think in an even up the score, yeah. uh, it kind of addresses the juxtaposition of that. No, totally. By its entirety. You, you are very, you are, by all definitions, a loving and, and, and serving musician as such. 
but that does not go without the other people being unchecked as well. And this particular album of yours, mm. I hear loads of elements in there. I hear very, very clever kind of Elvis Costello type social commentary. Okay. Uh, there's a whole lot of Queen going on there oh, yeah, because obviously, yeah. you know, we're all Queen fans. You in particular are very, very vocal about Queen mm -hmm. and rightfully so. So tell us a little bit about even at the score for other people that haven't managed to have yeah. little snippets just yet. There's a lot of things going on there, Toby. Mm. You're continuing mm. the dialogue and the conversation. Mm. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, I mean, it's kind of a bit of an odd one because it, the song, even up the score, just taken the, that actual song, which is the title track of the record, um, was written, you know, before, pre-pandemic, you know, so, but it was a continuation of my exploration, the narrative exploration of what I feel is kind of my personal view. And also I think the reflected a view of the guys as well because we're all we all feel pretty so social socio-politically sort of invent you know we all we're all very aware of what's going on and we feel we want to try and do our bit to talk about those things mm -hmm. and so you know i've continued that narrative i mean the truth thing what it used to be was a pretty quite a political statement in lots of ways um with a small p i don't i don't feel like i want to point the finger and and judge anyone but i'm trying to raise the conversation about are we this you know, what are we doing are are, the, are we the best we can be no we're not so how do we, we tackle the problems that we have in, in, in society? How do we tackle the ongoing problems of how we deal with each other? Um, and then, of course, the pandemic hit. And I'd already written quite a lot of the songs for this record anyway. And it just all seemed to make sense. It seemed to sort of kind of crazily sort of all of a sudden coalesce in a sort of sense of, hang on, you know, what I'm talking about here has become even more heightened because of the difficulty we're all dealing with. It absolutely it did, it did. So, you know, I sort of feel that this record continues that conversation. What I have done and what has been amazing about making this record, because we did make this record in lockdown, is it gave us a lot of time to really think about the tunes. I, I readjusted some of the words, changed a couple of minor things. We worked on the arrangements. It gave us some distance. And so, I think by the time we'd finished the recording, I think we all felt it, we'd, you know, we'd kind of really drawn a line under what we were trying to say, what we felt this was about. Um, and it just seemed to make a complete, even more crazy sense because of what we were all going through. I mean, the one for me is Big Day, the, the second single we put out on the record, to be talking about what are we going to do when we get our big day back, you know, when we're in the midst of a, a pandemic and everyone's hoping for the best sort of thing. It just seemed to make some kind of, I mean, I didn't plan that. That was just, a, I had the title Big Day three years ago, you know, it's absolutely mad, you know. But I do think sometimes, you know, the you know, your, the, what you do as an artist is you, you, I feel there's a responsibility to talk about what's going on. And even though no one could have planned for what we've had, had here, a lot of the problems that are now being under the microscope, like you're quite rightly saying, being magnified, were already there. Yeah. You know, pre-pandemic, they were already there as far as I'm concerned. And so this discussion's the same. It just, I think it just means that people can perhaps look at these songs and go, oh, hang on, you know, okay, I get it a bit more now. We're not quite so distracted. And we've been focusing on things like trying to get mindfulness under control, you know, kindness towards each other, you know, being honest with each other about the problems that we're facing as a society and how we go forward and how we can change and make things better. And inevitably, that causes the other side of the coin, which is things become more difficult in other ways. So. You know, I'm hoping that the music, this music can, you know, like I always try and do, is it's just a conversation. I want people to start talking about things and try and address, hopefully address some of the issues that it, it may raise, you know. I think it's never been, for you, really about finger pointing. No. You're not a finger pointer by any stretch of the means, but just offering a view, an yeah, opinion, yeah, 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 and totally. a conversation. And like you said, with this particular situation that we've been through in these last few months, it's, it's, it's helped people to focus on the subjects that you talk about in the yeah. album uh, because otherwise you know other the time they'll be just getting on with their day jobs getting on with their own lives exactly. in that rat race we've had a time to step off that wheel yeah and now and really kind of self-evaluate and what's interesting this is our big day yeah this is our big day yeah, today absolutely right so it's history <laughs> in that's the true. making that's true you know i mean you know Rock and roll is a lot of things to a lot of people in different, all kinds of different ways. But what I've always felt rock and roll about is about, and what music is about in general, is about freedom. It gives us a sense of freedom because you can believe what you want to believe. You can take part in the way you want to take part in it. And it's up to you what you take out of that great music that you're listening to and how you value that. And that's the most important bit for me. If someone wants to take Wayward Sons on face value as a simple rock and roll band then fantastic if you want to dig a bit deeper get into the lower the deeper layers and understand what i'm talking about and what we mean then that's there as well but it, I, I you know i don't want to point the finger at anyone or judge anyone for anything but i, I do think 
the great thing about art, especially music, especially rock and roll, it's always been that place where you can find the freedom, but you can find, hopefully find some answers or at least some questions that you can question yourself with. You know? And a central meeting point for all, yeah, fan and band, totally. in totally now, yeah. live music. Absolutely. Which absolutely. is really what we're here to talk about today. Exactly. Because it's such a wonderful thing. And you've got a tour coming up later on this year yeah. in November. That's right. I am so excited. <laughs> Because it's <laughs> funny enough, that isn't it? Really, you get to do it. We yeah. just get to watch it. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that tour. What's the plan for that? What are you doing? Is it going to be something from all of the three albums, or is it something a little bit different? What's the plan? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be tracks from all of the three records. I mean, sadly, you know, we I mean, you couldn't make it up, could you? And we we came off that sort of Steel Panther tour, uh, you know, sort of. Um, End of, end of 19 and you know we're, we're heading into what was going to be our sort of second headline set of dates in the in april and of course that all went to the wall because of lockdown and you know sadly that tr the truth thing what it used to be album kind of disappeared into the sea you know it's one of those where i mean that happened to so many bands and so many acts so it's you know we weren't alone but it was a it was a real heartbreaking thing to see that music kind of almost disappear really so it's my full intention on this these dates in november um, as we have been doing on, on these few dates we've been doing through this, this summer you know is to revisit that record and to reassert it a little bit um, and so in november we're you know we're planning an hour and 45 minute set you know where we'll we'll, we'll touch upon every single one of the records and give you know what we feel are the best songs off those records you know airing you know um I mean, it was quite interesting when I was doing the lockdown shows that, um, you know, songs were being requested, you know, um, especially Fade Away, actually, funny enough, from the second record. So, I mean, it's absolutely certain we'll be playing that track for it. And that would be the first time we played it live as a band. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be really cool, you know, looking forward to it. But a lot of songs for the new record. I mean, we do feel very strongly that this is our, this third album is probably the most confident record we've made. I think we've really hit our stride with it. And um, so, you know, so there's going to be a lot of content from that. Too. I'm inclined to agree. It's thank a very, you. very strong album. Thank Toby Jepson, thank you so much for joining us here. My pleasure as always. Thank you, sir.